What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. I have the one and only Lou from Tropic Marine on today. How are you doing today, Lou? I'm doing great, Devin. How are you doing today? Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Good to see you finally. We've been talking about doing a stream for a while, so I'm happy it's finally happening. Yeah, it's nice to finally put it together. It's fun to be here. Now, you are one of the originals of the balling method and kind of starting to dose and stuff from reef tanks way back in the day. So you were... Well, I'm, I'm not actually one of the originals. I learned everything I know about the balling yeah. method from Hans Werner Balling himself, the guy mm -hmm. that developed the balling method. And uh, I learned about it because um, in 2001, mm -hmm. Tropic Marin hired Hans Werner to be the head of our product development. So mm -hmm. uh, when I came on board and learned about the balling method, I learned about it from him. And uh, it was um, it's it's something that, you know, is used ex very, very extensively in Europe and not so much here in the States, but it is a wonderful method of maintaining calcium and alkalinity in in reefs mm -hmm. and avoiding that ionic imbalance that tends to happen from the two part method. Yeah, exactly. And it's still one of the most, I'm going to say, common ways of doing it these days. So, Yeah, and it's very effective. It's very mm -hmm. concentrated. And, the, um, you know, the my, my approach to calcium and alkalinity is that there's a lot of different ways to maintain calcium and alkalinity in reefs. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it's good, better, best. It's not one is better than the other or not as good as the other. It's really a matter of what do you want to do with your reef? What is it that you want to be able to do? If you want to be able to tweak the amount of alkalinity and calcium going into your system on a daily basis or even on a monthly basis, if you want to be able to adjust that um, very easily, then the balling method is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. All of these methods have their, their, their advantages and disadvantages. The advantage to the balling method is you can tweak the alkalinity and calcium quantities going in. Mm -hmm. um, the the other big advantage is that you avoid that ionic imbalance of the two part method, yeah. the buildup of sodium chloride. Mm -hmm. um, the disadvantage is you need three dosing pumps, or you have to dose manually dose three solutions, mm -hmm. which is kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to set up three dosing pumps, and you don't want to have three three manual dosing things that you need to do. Then you need to go to something different. And there are lots of other ways to do it as well nowadays that um, that avoid avoid that. Mm -hmm. So on to the different ways. I, I've only, <laughs> okay, so personally, I mean, I've tried Kelk. I've done, you know, the three-part balling method. Uh, yeah. And currently calcium reactor my big tank and just dosing the different parts on the little tank. Now, one cool thing that you have out now is your carbo calcium, your Alpha Reef, which is yes. more or less all in one solution, which is really cool. And I've actually had a lot of people ask me over the last three or four months since it's been out, how, how you do it? How do you make it so stuff doesn't precipitate? How exactly does it work? It's magic, dude. Black it's magic. magic. Black magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, um, you know, there. The, I'm going to start with the history of this a little bit because okay. it's important to understand the history so you can kind of understand where this comes from. There's a very, um, you, you mentioned Kalkwasser, calcium hydroxide. Yeah. And um, calcium hydroxide is a great way to do this, to add calcium and alkalinity to the system. But the problem with calcium hydroxide, one of the problems is that, it's very dilute, mm -hmm. so you need a lot of it. And sometimes the system needs, say, two cups of top-off water every day, mm -hmm. but it needs four cups of calcium hydroxide in order to meet the calcium alkalinity demand. And so sometimes it's downright impossible to maintain the calcium and alkalinity with calcium hydroxide because it's just so dilute. But the other problem for me, the reason I don't like it as my primary way to maintain calcium and alkalinity is because it it's going to adjust the pH. It's going to raise the pH. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people like it precisely for that reason. They use it because it brings the pH up in the tank. Personally, I'd rather have my tank run at a stable pH that the tank is maintaining and not depending on my addition every day mm -hmm. to bring that pH up. Yep. So for those reasons, I'm not a huge fan of using Kalkwasser as the primary form of calcium and alkalinity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now there's a very, very old school way of doing it as well with a single solution that is calcium acetate. And there actually are 
still a couple of calcium acetate products on the market. Mm -hmm. Our product, our carbocalcium, is not to be confused with calcium acetate, although it works in a similar way. Mm -hmm. The way calcium acetate works is that the calcium goes into solution, and then the acetate is metabolized into the carbonates. Okay. The problem with that is that the metabolism of the acetate is so aggressive that it uses a tremendous amount of oxygen. And in fact, it uses so much oxygen that you can't add enough calcium acetate to a tank generally mm -hmm. to maintain the calcium because the oxygen depletion is too much. So um, although it does work, and there are still some products on the market that use calcium acetate, also not my first choice again because of that oxygen depletion mm -hmm. of the acetate. Our products, um, and I, I got to get a little product here, product here, I'm sorry. Plug away, um, <laughs> uh, so we have carbocalcium, that's one of them, and the other one is the All for Reef. Mm -hmm. um, and the, um, both of these products are based in calcium formate. Calcium formate works in a very similar way as calcium acetate works, where the calcium goes into solution, and then the formate is metabolized by bacteria, by beneficial bacteria, into the carbonates, the, the alkalinity. Mm -hmm. The difference is that the metabolization of the formate uses a fraction of the oxygen that the acetate does. Okay. And so it's, it's more than, than uh, you're more than able to put as much calcium and alkalinity as you need into the tank because the oxygen depletion is so small. Mm -hmm. um, in, in fact, one of the questions that often comes up with calcium formate is, are you also carbon dosing the tank? Mm -hmm. Because if you're, if you're feeding this beneficial bacteria to form the carbonates, isn't that carbon dosing? Well, the technical answer to that is yes, it is carbon dosing, but the metabolism is so small that you don't really get any benefit of the carbon dosing. Okay. So if you're okay. doing any carbon dosing in the tank, you don't have to adjust your carbon dosing if you start uh, carbocalcium or all for reef, okay. um, because it's not going to change. It's not going to add much to that system. Okay. So okay. very, very, very minute. Very so yeah, very so tiny. With the, with other, the other system. Other system. Oh, I can hear myself. I can hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so with the other systems you're saying, so what it does is the acetate version is it sucks a lot of the oxygen out of the water. Correct. Okay. So much so that it prevents you from adding enough in a, in a healthy growing reef to be able to meet the calcium demand mm -hmm. because the oxygen goes down too low. Okay. And, and so, uh, but with the formate, you don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. There's very, very little oxygen consumption. And in fact, um, there is a tank that I won't tell you whose tank it is, but it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, there is a little 30 gallon tank uh, that that's a pretty well known tank, actually, uh, out in the industry mm -hmm. uh, that's using our all for reef where the population in the tank is so dense that this guy is putting three times our recommended maximum dose in every single day <laughs> and there's still no oxygen problem in nice. the tank. So, that, that's um, with all for reef or which one? That's with the all for okay. reef. Um, so let's talk about the difference between those two. So the carbocalcium yep. will supply calcium and alkalinity alone. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. It will not change pH. It doesn't raise the salinity like the two part or the bowling method does. The only thing that you're adding to the tank when you're adding carbocalcium is calcium and alkalinity. And the carbocalcium comes as, uh, as a liquid. It also comes as a powder. Um, this is just a little sample, but it does come as a powder as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot um, uh, more economical to buy it as a powder. You mix it with RODI water yourself, and then you're not paying us to mix it with water and ship water around the world. Uh, so it's a lot more economical to do it that way. So the carbocalcium, calcium and alkalinity alone. Now, once we figured out how to put calcium and alkalinity in a single solution, mm -hmm. then we started thinking, well, why not add magnesium 
and trace elements. Nice. So that now you've got a single solution. This is the, now we're talking about the all for mm -hmm. Now you have a single solution that doses calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and trace elements. Nice. It is nice. Mm -hmm. But now you now, of course, the next question is, well, why do we have carbocalcium at all? Why don't we just use all for reef and get everything in one mm -hmm. solution? The answer to that is that there is one thing that you give up when you start putting things in one solution. And that is that ability to tweak the amount of each one that goes in. When you put in all for reef, you're putting in the ratio of calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and trace elements that mm -hmm. we put in the bottle. Yeah. And if you want to increase one of those, you've got to add some other product. Mm -hmm. If you want to decrease one of those, there's no way to do it because you're adding it in our proportions. Yeah. So at the, the app. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. At the same time, it's kind of nice to be able to have one thing to dose, and you know, it's always balanced. I, I a huge totally benefit. agree. Yeah. But saying that it's always balanced is kind of Ma a mainly problem. balanced <laughs> because yeah. the balance depends on what your aquarium is going to use. Yeah. And the reason I like to see people use the all for reef mm -hmm. in, I usually say smaller aquariums, but the real thing is what percentage water change do you do? Mm -hmm. If you're one of these people that has a 29 nano and you're doing a 40% water change every two weeks. That means if you get a little bit too much or a little bit less magnesium than you need, mm -hmm. you're gonna correct 40% of that problem when you do your water change. Yeah. So in a system that's getting a, a larger percentage of water change, definitely go with the all for reef because you're getting everything you need except food in okay. one solution. So nano tanks, smaller systems where you know your water change has a big impact, I mean, all for reef, Excellent solution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in the larger systems where you're doing maybe a 10 or a 12 or a 15 percent water change, you're only going to going to correct 10 percent of that imbalance when you do your water change. Mm -hmm. So in those systems, I like to see people use the carbocalcium because the calcium and the alkalinity uptake is going to be very related to each other. Yeah. So it'll stay balanced. Now, here's a cool thing that you can do. Okay. The calcium and alkalinity uptake is very related to each other mm -hmm. as is the trace element uptake related to those mm -hmm. the magnesium uptake is completely separate sometimes you'll see a tank use a ton of magnesium yep. and sometimes you'll see it only okay. use a little so, bit okay so here's a question with yeah. your balling method most of the trace elements are mixed with the magnesium though aren't they oh you're asking a huge <laughs> question um that that is yep. true okay okay it is mixed with the trace elements yep. however the piece of the puzzle that you're missing there is that the balling method does not supplement magnesium and trace elements okay all right yep. um let me let me finish on the carbocalcium for a second let me go back to that and then okay. i want to explain what i mean by the fact that it doesn't supplement all right okay. but Let's go back to carbocalcium for a second. Yeah. So the magnesium usage is not related always to the calcium alkalinity uptake where the trace element usage is. So what you can do in a larger system is you can use the carbocalcium for the calcium and the alkalinity. And you can actually add our trace A and trace K to the carbocalcium so that now you have one solution that's dosing your calcium your alkalinity and your trace elements in a larger system. And you still have control over the amount of magnesium going in because you do that separately. Mm -hmm. That's how I like to do a larger system. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Now let's get back to your balling question. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> you are correct that <laughs> the part a yep. of the balling method is the calcium chloride mm -hmm. and the part B of the balling method is the sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate. Mm -hmm. And you are correct that the part C is everything else that's in natural seawater. So it's mostly magnesium, but also all 70 trace elements. Mm -hmm. But here's the kicker. Just like the two-part method, the part A and part B of the balling method leave you with residual sodium chloride. 
-hmm. The part C that you add, the only thing that part C does is to balance and offset that sodium chloride. Okay. It doesn't supplement for used magnesium and trace elements. Okay. So you still need to add magnesium and trace elements when you're using the balling method mm -hmm. because all you're adding is calcium and alkalinity. Mm -hmm. So I make a distinction between adding magnesium and trace elements, which the part C does, yep. and supplementing for used magnesium and trace elements, okay. which the part C does not do. I've never considered the difference. It's good to know. Well, yep. when you, if you look at how it works, all of the part C that you add, you end up diluting with fresh water. Mm -hmm. So you're not really supplementing for magnesium and trace elements. Okay. So then people always say to me, well, why don't I just add a little bit more of C to supplement my magnesium and trace elements? And the reason that you don't do that is that you don't want to supplement all 70 trace elements in natural seawater. Mm -hmm. You want to supplement about 17 of them that we know get used in reef tanks. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a good idea to use the part C of the balling to supplement your magnesium and trace elements. I prefer to see people just do that separately. Okay. A um, couple quick questions I want to get before I forget and I completely scroll away. Uh, <laughs> so, do, 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 do. Okay. So, who's that one? G Day Reefing. Thanks for the $5 super chat. Much appreciated. He goes, I don't think I've seen this in Australia. Is it o available over here? I'd love to try it in my nano. I'm assuming that's the all for reef. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's available in Australia, but I know we have a very strong market in Australia. And my guess is that it is now available somewhere in Australia, um, but it certainly is available here in the U.S. Okay, perfect. Uh, if you, uh, by the way, yep. uh, if you are looking for the product, um, there's a number of online sources where you can get it. Um, I always like to see you first try your local reef shop. Mm -hmm. If you go to the tropicmarin-usa.com website, there's a store locator on there that'll show you in your state all of the Tropic Marin preferred dealers. Any of those preferred dealers will have the all for reef and the carbon calcium in their shop. Excellent. Perfect. So there you go. Check the website and see where the dealers are located, at least for the U.S. Is that outside of U.S. as well or just U.S.? For, for, for... Uh, it's just the U.S. Okay. Uh, it, with the store locator is exclusively U.S. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, another one we had a few minutes ago for the all for reef, because you also said someone is dosing three times the daily limit. So they were asking, yeah. is there a daily limit? There is a daily limit, um, okay. but it's clearly uh, flexible. Um, we're very, we're, we're very mm -hmm. conservative with setting that limit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's set at 10 milliliters per 26 gallons per day um, is the is the the limit that we set. Okay, but we're, we're setting that limit because we're still kind of learning how the calcium formate works mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, but this one person that um, is using three times the daily dose, the recommended maximum daily go dose, yeah. is not having any issues. And I consider that tank kind of my test tank. So um, I can I can um, show you a picture of what that tank looks like. Excellent. Um, I've got to kind of do it on my phone, but I think this will work. Okay. Let's see if this works. Ah, nice tank. I like it. That's it's a 29 gallon. Nice. That's what that tank looks like. And that tank is being maintained triple dose. with <laughs> triple dose. And you can see the population is crazy. Yeah, it's packed. You know, and that's why they're, they've got to dose so much. Mm -hmm. Nice. I don't know if that came across clear or not, but nope, it was not bad, actually. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. So another one. Uh, Reefaholic really, really, really wants to know because he's asked about 10 times. Um, how strong is the carbocalcium? So megs per liter of alkalinity and megs per liter of calcium. Um, I Let's see. I don't think I have that information right at hand, but I can tell you this. Okay. Um, there is a number that I do know right offhand. Let me just see if I've got that. Um, yeah, I don't have that right here. Okay. If you go to... Um, uh, the, the main European Tropic Marin website, which is mm -hmm. tropicmarin.com, um, and you call it up, you, that information will be right on the website. I can tell you this, no. Mm -hmm. In relation to calcium hydroxide, Kalkwasser, yep. if you have five liters 
mm. of saturated Kalkwasser solution. So about a gallon and a quarter okay. of saturated Kalkwasser solution. That'll give you a total of about 4.9 uh, uh, grams of calcium. Okay. Mm. You get the same 4.9 grams of calcium out of about five ounces of carbocalcium. Okay. So nice. five ounces as opposed to five oh. liters. Okay, so that's a huge difference. Huge difference. Huge. So just just for fun, if someone didn't have a dosing pump, could they add carbocalcium to an off, auto top off and use it like they would a calcwasser to dose via that? I mean, it's not the best because it depends on your evaporation. But oh no, it's it's a great way to do yeah? it. Nice. Um, as long as you keep the evaporation in your ATO that down to a minimum, mm -hmm. uh, it's a very easy calculation to do. Mm -hmm. What you do is you start dosing the carbocalcium on a daily basis manually. Once you know how many milliliters of carbocalcium or Olfarif, by that matter, you could do this with either one. Mm -hmm. Once you know how many milliliters of carbocalcium you need to maintain your levels every day. You know the size of your ATO vat holding tank. You know, you have to know how many milliliters of ATO go into your tank every day. Mm -hmm. You just calculate how many milliliters of carbocalcium do I need to put into the holding tank yep. so that when the ATO puts in whatever it is, 100 milliliters a day of ATO liquid, mm -hmm. you're getting your 10 milliliters okay. of carbocalcium or whatever that is. Yeah. It's a very, very easy calculation to do. Mm -hmm. And because the carbocalcium is so concentrated, you can do it with carbocalcium and all for reef, which you can't really do with the calcwasser because it's too dilute. Yeah. Okay. No, makes sense. Um, do, 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 do. So, okay. So Richard asking, is it possible to add trace elements? So K plus and a minus to different, Tropic Marin balling solutions. It would mean two dosing pumps less. If so, what mixture should be used? It is possible to do it. Um, and if I remember correctly, you add the um, you add the trace A mm -hmm. to the balling B, okay. and you add the trace K to the balling A. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Perfect. The secret solution. And again. Similar similar type of calculation. You have to know how much balling solution is going in your tank every day. Put the proper amount of trace elements in that holding tank mm -hmm. so that when you dose it, you're dosing the right amount of trace elements. Okay. Excellent. That's a good one. Okay. Another one I had on the list. Uh, with your salts, you have, I think, three, four different types of salt. Four. Four? Okay. Yes. So there's the classic, the pro reef, the bioactive. And, is and the symbiotic? symbiotic, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's the difference in them all? And why would I want to use which one over the other one? All right. Good question. Um, I'm going to do a, Devin, I'm going to do a screen capture here sure. and uh, bring up a little explanation for you. Excellent. Sounds like a plan. Uh, uh, Raj was saying A plus and K plus are great additives. Excellent. Hey, double me. Ooh, that's, the, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All, All right. right. So pull that do you have bit. the classic salt up now? Yep. Just I'm just resizing it so it fills the screen. All right. There we go. Okay. So um, here you've got the, um, the kind of the main parameters on the classic mix. The alkalinity is 9 to 10. The... Um, the calcium is 370 to 390, mm -hmm. and the magnesium is 1250 to 1300. Now, this is good to use on certainly on a fish only tank or in a reef tank where you want to keep a slightly higher alkalinity. You can see this alkalinity is 9 to 10. Mm -hmm. We are not proponents of raising the alkalinity and raising the calcium and raising the magnesium to get quicker coral growth. Corals have been growing just fine for hundreds of thousands of years in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the ocean alkalinity is about six and a half. Mm -hmm. So to us, nine to 10 is pretty high. Yep. That's as high as we like to see you go. Mm -hmm. And so the classic salt is really good for fish only um, or for reefs that you want to keep at a slightly higher alkalinity. Okay. okay? Then we've got a pro reef. Um, this is our best-selling salt. Now, we lowered the whole reason Pro Reef exists 
is so that we could lower that alkalinity down to the 7 to 8 dKH range. Mm -hmm. Once we lowered the alkalinity, it allowed us to put a little bit more calcium and a little bit more magnesium in. Mm -hmm. So this is great for reefs that are kept at closer to natural seawater alkalinity, somewhere between six and a half and eight, um, or tanks that have had a calcium or a calc reactor on them for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And that's because the calcium and the calc reactors in, in, in the long run tend to push the alkalinity up a little bit. This doesn't keep the alkalinity down. It just doesn't add to that yeah. increased alkalinity at all. Then we have our bioactive system salt. So in the bioactive system salt, it is exactly like the Pro Reef, we, it, with, with uh, two exceptions. One is that we've raised that alkalinity up to eight to nine. Mm -hmm. The other numbers you can see are exactly the same, but we've also added uh, reef active. So this is, it, it includes already the first of our carbon dosing products. We make, a, we make five different carbon dosing products. Um, this includes the first of the carbon dosing products. The advantage of that is that now, every time you do a water change, you get all the benefits of carbon dosing mm -hmm. without any of the risk of over carbon dosing your tank. Okay. You could literally start an aquarium with this bioactive system salt and you would not over carbon dose that that tank huh. uh, then so are you essentially just carbon dosing through your water changes because it's in the salt yes. okay yes nice. exactly then we move to the symbiotic salt the symbiotic salt you can see from all of the numbers is exactly like the bioactive system salt mm -hmm. but now we've also added probiotic compounds for the fish and the shrimp nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria and also purple bacteria. What the purple bacteria does is to metabolize the hydrogen sulfide from anaerobic activity in the tank, which is very toxic, into much less toxic um, sulfur and sulfate. Mm -hmm. uh, this happens naturally in the ocean. We just reinforce that um, that carb that uh, that process with adding some dormant purple bacteria to the to the salt mix itself. Oh, okay, nice. All right, so let me see if I can get back to you now. So, what's your most common one that you get or use? Like, what do you what do you sell the most of? What do most people kind of go to? Uh, definitely the the number one seller is the Pro Reef salt. Okay. Um, now there is one difference that is also worth mentioning, mm -hmm. which is that any of the salts that have the polymers in them, the bioactive system salt and the symbiotic salt. You can't really hold those once you've mixed it up for too long, mm -hmm. because what polymers do is that they chain up. And if you hold that mixture mm -hmm. for more than about 36, 24, 36 hours, what happens is those polymers start to chain up and they make kind of like these slimy blobs. They don't <laughs> hurt anything. Yeah. They're just not real attractive. Yes. Um, yeah. The classic salt and the pro reef salt, mm -hmm. we have aquariums that mix up that salt and hold it for weeks or months nice. um no problem but the symbiotic and the bioactive system salt you really need to use them within about 36 hours of mixing them up mm -hmm. and by the way they always stay a little tiny bit cloudy there's always a little bit of cloudiness in there but when you do your water change mm -hmm. that cloudiness goes into your tank but within about a half an hour or an hour, it's gone. The okay. tank will be crystal clear. And the cloudiness is those those polymers that the cloudiness is made up by those polymers mm -hmm. that feed the beneficial bacteria and okay. fungi. And fungi exactly mm -hmm. the reason you're using the salt. Nice. Good to know. Very cool. So the one thing that kind of made me laugh a little bit, which is good, but you because the pro one is actually the lower elk in pretty much every other brand out there. They jack up the elk on that to crazy Correct. high levels. Uh, that's correct. We are not fans of that. Um, our approach is that the ocean has been doing what it's needed to do in the way it's needed to do it for corals for a very, very long time. Um, I think that it's unlikely that in 100 years of reef keeping, we're going to figure out a way better way to do this than the ocean does. Yeah. Um, there's there's a, a lot of research being done with you know, elevated 
alkalinity, elevated calcium, elevated magnesium. And some of that research is showing that the, the coral skeletons don't incorporate trace elements in exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. The structures of the carbocalcium skeleton is not exactly the same. Nobody's really sure what that growth means in the long run for the corals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, corals grow pretty quickly um, in good conditions. And in our opinion, good conditions are ocean conditions. Hey, Mother Nature knows best. She's been doing a long time. Yeah, there's actually a lot of um, research coming out of Europe showing that certain species of Acropora uh, really hate when the alkalinity gets above 10. Uh, mm -hmm. They look like completely different heads of coral at, at 7 or 8 than they do at 11 mm -hmm. uh, DKH. And um, if you if you want to propagate acros, you'll find a lot of people. Out, listen, you can, you can find anything on the Internet. Um, you, you'll find a lot of people out there that say they grow a lot faster at 11 or 12 DKH. Mm -hmm. But the research, not all the research backs that up exactly. Mm -hmm. No, that's fair. So in my big tank, I generally keep it in kind of the eight, eight and a half type of range. Um, Perfect. My nano tank, after neglecting testing for a long time, I tested yeah. one day. It was around 5.6, but the tank yeah. looked amazing. Like all the acros, everything was just completely happy in the lower elk. So I was like, huh, what do you know? Never. Well, you know, the, the, the thing that coral hates most change <laughs> is change. You're yeah. absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And if it took six months to work its way down to five or five and a half mm -hmm. and, and you don't make it go from the worst thing you can do at that point is to say you know is to freak out and start dumping a bunch of bicarbonates in the tank yeah. and raise it up to nine overnight mm -hmm. you kill you'll kill the corals yeah. um you have to remember that corals live their lives by osmosis and diffusion mm -hmm. they're constantly exchanging compounds with their surroundings and mm -hmm. so if the surroundings all of a sudden change drastically they either get a huge influx of fluid hmm. or they get a huge um, exit of fluid, one of the two, depending on what happens in their environment. And that's the worst thing in the world for them. Yeah. So it, you can chase the numbers all you want. Just don't change it. Chase them quickly because that's the worst thing you can do. Hmm. And alkalinity, by the way, is one of the things that influences the corals most um your calcium level can go up and down a little bit without any adverse effect if your alkalinity goes up and down more than a few points quickly that mm -hmm. really affects the the corals tremendously yep um okay so derek was asking what do you recommend the ideal kind of parameters for a tank where, where, do, you, uh -huh. where, where do you think it's perfect to keep them at well, let's see. I could do this and I could give you a little screenshot. <laughs> the problem is it comes out backwards, right? Oh, no, it actually shows up. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll do that so you can do a little screenshot of that if you want. All right. Optimal salinity 1.025 to 1.027. Uh, the second line, I can't actually read the headers. M move her to the side a little bit. Oh, which which way? This way? Yeah, either one. Yeah, I can't see which each row is. Oh, there we go. So a little more, a little more, a little more. All right, so conductivity, we got 45 to 55. Uh, I think that's ORP, oxygen reduction, redox potential, 250 to 350. pH, 8.1, 8.4. Hardness, 6 to 10. Potassium, 380 to 420. All right, and then here's the major ones that everybody looks at. Okay, so we got magnesium, so 1,200 to 1,350. Calcium, looks like it's about 390 to 430. Uh, NO3, so nitrates, 2 to 10. Uh, is that nitrates? That might be nitrates again. Not sure what that one is. Ammonia, super low, less than 0 0.01. And phosphates, 0 to 0 0.05. And there's a really important one. Um, you know, your corals can live in a pretty much zero nitrate environment. They cannot live in a zero phosphate environment. Mm -hmm. And when people are... are pushing for those low ultra yeah. low nutrient systems um zero phosphate is not where you want to go yeah i would agree. okay so did you, okay so you said they can sustain they can survive in zero nitrate but not zero phosphate 
Correct. They will not thrive yeah. in a zero phosphate environment. They can thrive in a zero nitrate environment. Hmm. There's actually, a, um, I'm going to be speaking at Reef of Palooza out in Anaheim in a couple of weeks. And mm -hmm. I'm also doing a reef chemistry thing down at MACNA this year. Nice. Um, the, uh, the, the reason for this is quite interesting. Um, the corals, coral polyps, have a really good mechanism for taking nitrates out of the water column. Mm -hmm. They have a very poor mechanism for getting phosphates out of the water column in the very low concentrations that we keep phosphates in a reef aquarium. And the big advantage of carbon dosing, in my opinion, is not that it lowers your nutrient levels. The big advantage of carbon dosing is that you're feeding beneficial bacteria and fungi that have exactly the opposite. They have a very good mechanism for getting phosphates out of the water column at very low concentrations. Mm -hmm. And they have a lousy mechanism for getting nitrates out of the water column at very low concentrations. So what happens is when you carbon dose, you're feeding this beneficial bacteria and promoting the growth of this bacteria that is constantly taking the phosphates out of the water column. Mm -hmm. And when the coral polyps eat, and as filter feeders eat that bacteria, they're getting the phosphates that they need that they mm -hmm. can't get directly out of the water column themselves. Nice. That to me is the true advantage of carbon dosing, not the lower nutrient levels. Yep. So it's essentially providing a, a different food source or a more direct food source for your corals. Huh, never yeah. considered that way, nice. Uh, well, every you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at things, and everybody, yep. um, the the reason carbon dosing got started in commercial aquaculture was to lower the nutrient levels, and that's kind of why everybody does it. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, they're missing the whole point. The whole point is we're funneling those phosphates into a mechanism that the corals can get them. Mm -hmm. If your phosphate level is 0.0 you know, three or 0 0.04 or 0 0.05 in your aquarium, mm -hmm. where if you didn't do that, those corals would be starved for those phosphates that they that they need so desperately. Mm -hmm. Huh, nice. That's a really good way of looking at it. Different. Yep. <laughs> Derek, thank you for the $5 super chat. And he also said reef bot, just reef bot. <laughs> uh, so yeah. on, on that note, on that yeah, note. Yeah, everybody's buying our, um, our, uh, uh, professional phosphate kit because yep. <laughs> it works really really well in the reef bot <laughs> I, I have one too it does work very well uh, <laughs> i would second that yeah i was, I was laughing because they're out they seem to be out of stock very quickly everywhere <laughs> yeah we're we're trying to get more of those in the country we're actually uh um some of the stores and also bulk reef supply mm -hmm. will very soon have little uh, bags of just the reagents That's so you're not buying you're not buying the whole kit because with the reef bot you don't need the kit you just yeah. need the reagents yeah. so we've packaged just the reagents and we're going to be bringing those into the country and uh, i think i think um, uh bulk reef supply might o might already have some really by now perfect excellent love it uh miss reefer fox was asking is there any drawbacks to carbon dosing um well <laughs> if it's not done properly, mm -hmm. then you not only feed the bad guys, but you feed the good guys. So that's as well. overdoing so, it. Yeah. Um, so let's let's look at this for a second. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of things that we consider that we don't want in our aquariums, and. What people kind of miss the point is they say, you know, I want my I want my aquarium to be this perfect little chunk of the ocean. It's not really what you want. You want your aquarium to be this chunk of the ocean that grows all the things that you think look really cool yep. and doesn't grow any of the stuff that normally grows right next to that on a reef. <laughs> um, you go diving on almost any reef and you'll find cyanobacteria and dinoflagellates and bryopsis and green hair algae right next to the aquapora and the elkhorn and the brain and all of that stuff. So it's because they like the same conditions. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we walk this very, very fine line when we're doing a, a reef mm -hmm. where we're trying to grow all the stuff we like and not grow any of the stuff that we don't like. What sometimes happens 
is that the very thing keeping our corals from growing as well as they could is also keeping the bryopsis from growing as well as it could or the cyanobacteria. And sometimes when you start carbon dosing, it's what your corals needed, mm -hmm. but it's also what the cyanobacteria needed or the dinoflagellate or whatever bad thing grows. Gotcha. So you do have to be careful with carbon dosing. Okay. Um, and um, what we do as, again, I gotta, I gotta get a little Tropic Marin plug in here, plug away. <laughs> um, but what happens with most companies that make carbon dosing mm -hmm. products is they make one thing mm -hmm. and they say, you want a carbon dose? You add this and you add it in different quantities. What Tropic Marin does is to say there's different types of carbon dosing compounds. Mm -hmm. And depending on what your phosphate level is, mm -hmm. that determines which product you want to use. Okay. So um, if you want, I can do a little screen capture here again. Sure. Uh, hang on a minute here. And... Uh, I can do a little screen capture and I can show you uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, sounds good. Uh, just while you're prepping that, uh, 702JFLU was asking, uh, is there any chance of bringing out a bigger size of the Alpha Reef? Uh, it comes in a one liter size now. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we may be going to, uh, it's getting very, very popular and we may come come out with a um a two or three liter size but you can't get it in the one liter size mm -hmm. and again if it's very concentrated and so if you're using that alpha reef in a smaller aquarium that's getting larger water changes generally one liter would hold you for quite some time mm -hmm. okay um actually one other quick question actually that i was wondering so yeah the carbo calcium has a powder version is there any chance of an alpha reef in a powder version Unfortunately, not. Not possible. Um, it's not possible for us to do the some of the trace elements mm -hmm. in the powdered version, and so um, the um, the alpha reef probably will not come out as a powder. Okay, excellent. And quick shout out, Lynn Reef Nerd, five dollars super chat. Thank you very much. And he said, "Love Tropic Marin." All right. <laughs> and we love to hear that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, to uh, to talk about carbon dosing for a minute, uh, again, it's not one-stop shopping. Mm -hmm. You have to look at your, uh, your, your phosphate level. Now, we have two products that can be used at any phosphate level. Mm -hmm. the, reef, the Reef Active is one. Um, and the reason this can be used at any phosphate level is because it's not the type of alcohol acid uh based type of carbon dosing these um uh long chain polymers these the what does the carbon dosing in reef active comes from seaweed naturally occurring long chain polymers from seaweed very very safe almost impossible to overdose it this is actually what is added to pro reef salt in order to make the bioactive system salt. Mm -hmm. We actually add reef active to it. Um, we also have our NP bacto pellets, which um, are have the same type of polymer in them. Mm -hmm. And so um, again, these can be used in a fluidized bed reactor and they automatically carbon dose the tank on a regular basis. And again, not impossible to overdose it, but very hard to, um, to overdose and this is a wonderful way to to dose a reef tank because you, once you get it going and you get the flow correct you don't really need to do much of anything else mm -hmm. nice now we have our lim np this is the first of our this is kind of that uh um high level acid uh vinegar kind of dosing product um and you'll see that the big distinction here is greater than 0.1 ppm phosphate concentration. Mm -hmm. So if, if you need to really knock those phosphates down, you wanna use the Alima NP if you're 0.1 or above in your phosphate concentration, okay. okay? Now we go down to the next level where 0.2 to 0.1, again, here we go. And 
this is NP back to balance. NP back to balance will balance the nitrate phosphate ratio so that you can get the advantage from the carbon dosing. If that ratio is not right and there's the phosphates are too low, you start growing the bad guys, not the good guys. Mm -hmm. And so if you're between 0.02 and 0.1, you have to actually add some phosphates to the tank for that uh, carbon dosing to work effectively. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a little bit of overlap between the NP back to balance and the, the plus NP. Plus NP is used when that phosphate level is under 0.05. Um, there, the, the overlap there is 0.02 to 0.05. And what I look at is, is that is that phosphate level going up or going down? Mm -hmm. If it's going up, I use the, um, the NP back to balance. If it's going down, I use the plus NP. So what plus NP does is to actually add the nitrates and phosphates along with the carbon dosing so that you can get the advantage of the carbon dosing because if you're if your phosphates are below 0.05 mm -hmm. you're not able to get the advantage from that carbon dosing so what's the difference in the the first two that you mentioned that you said it doesn't matter what your phosphate levels are uh hang on a second let me just get you back again okay <laughs> sorry i'm a little technically challenged here. Oh, good it's like inception <laughs> I'm getting there. All right, there we go. Okay. Um, uh, so the difference is that the um, the reef active mm -hmm. and the NP bacto pellets are made with those polymers that come from seaweed. Okay. All right. Yep. They're still carbon polymers, mm -hmm. but they come from seaweed, and so their impact is on a slightly different type of organism in a slightly smaller way, where when you get to the vinegar acid base type of mm -hmm. uh, 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 polymers, uh, sugar is another one that does mm -hmm. the same thing, um, your, your carbon dosing is more aggressive mm -hmm. and you run more risk of overdosing. Because it's natural and seaweed based, would it be adding a smidge of phosphates as well to kind of help that process? Uh, there's not a lot of yeah. phosphates in the uh, reef active or okay. the uh, NP bacto pellets. Okay. Casey Nano says Lou is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice that I'm somebody's hero. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I like it. Yep. Okay. So Tom, Tom reef, reef Man was asking, why does the Ulfa Reefer turn brown in the dosing container? Um, is there? It could be that there's light getting to the dosing container. Mm -hmm. You know, light is always going to grow something. Okay. And so there, if you, if the dosing container is out in the room, open to the ambient light, um, what I would try to do is I would clean out that container really, really well. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I would black it out, mm -hmm. um, with whatever, um, black, uh, construction paper or whatever. And, um, if, if no light gets to it, um, my guess is that it's growing some uh, type of algae or or probably not bacteria. It's probably just growing some type, type of light-dependent algae. Okay. Uh, Brett was asking, when do phosphate levels get dangerous for SPS? So how high would you consider too high? Well, you know, there's um, – I, I was just talking to Hans Werner Balling about this, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, It's difficult to know what too high is. Yeah. Um, and I, and my guess is, and, and I don't know for sure, but my mm -hmm. guess is that the phosphate level as, as it goes up, um, will get to a point where you're growing tons of algae way before it gets to a level that's dangerous phosphate wise okay. for the corals. Yeah, that would make sense. Cause as the algae grows, you're going to, it's going to appear lower as it soaks it up as it grows. Yeah, I, I think that um, I think that the high the danger with the high phosphate level, it, it and again this is just a supposition. I don't know this for sure, mm -hmm. um, but my guess is that the danger with the elevated phosphate level is algae growth, not um, uh, some detrimental aspect with the corals. Okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, okay, Casey Nano is asking: Would carbocalcium powder be recommended combined with dosing trace elements? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, you can you can uh, you you take the powder, you turn it into the liquid of RODI water, and then mm -hmm. you can add the A and K to that liquid to trace Tropic Marin Trace A and Tropic Marin Trace K to that liquid in order to dose your um, your tank. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that the ratio that you're eventually shooting for is eight parts carbocalcium liquid to one part trace A and one part trace K. Now, the reason I say the ratio that you're shooting for mm -hmm. is because you don't want to start with that much trace elements. Okay. Whenever you're starting trace elements in a reef tank that is an established tank that has never had trace elements added to it, you want to start with about a quarter of a dose. So with the carbocalcium, it would be eight parts carbocalcium liquid to a quarter part A and a quarter part uh, K. Okay. And then slowly over the course of a few months, build build up to the one in one. Mm -hmm. um, the reason you do that, again, is because some of the bad guys want the same things that the good guys want. Mm -hmm. And if you see the growth of anything undesirable, mm -hmm. all you have to do is to stop the trace element addition mm -hmm. and that undesirable stuff will die off in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Let me make a distinction here. Yep. If you have a reef tank and all of a sudden you start to grow cyanobacteria or, or um green hair algae it grows all by itself mm -hmm. it's going to be a bear to get rid of it it's going to take months and months and months to get rid of it mm -hmm. okay if on the other hand that green hair algae starts to grow because of something you started adding to the tank yeah. and you stop adding that thing mm -hmm. then in a few weeks that algae will die off Starving then up. you can start to trace elements again mm -hmm. hopefully you've weakened the algae enough that it won't sometimes you need to do it two three times before you can start adding those trace elements mm -hmm. but if it started growing because of something you started adding and you stop adding that thing it'll die yeah makes sense so stop, stop feeding it <laughs> yeah exactly mm -hmm. excellent well i think that was most of the main ones is there anything else that you want to touch on or dig into well, we got to carbon dosing, which yep. was a real, that was something that I really <laughs> wanted to get to because it's so misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of carbon dosing, mm -hmm. but I'm not a huge fan of vodka, vinegar, or sugar dosing. I've only tried but vodka. I am, <laughs> well, I'd rather drink the vodka. And yeah. uh, um, no, but um, mm -hmm. it, it really depends on what you're adding to the tank at what uh, phosphate level. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as people remember that, it's a it's a huge advantage for corals because you're getting those phosphates now in a mechanism that the corals can take them up. And that to me is a tremendous advantage. And I'm a big fan. I like to see more people carbon dosing, um, but not just indiscriminately throwing vodka or vinegar in the tank. Yep. No, that's very cool. It's actually really interesting that you have four different types of carbon dosing products for different scenarios. Which I've never... Yep even considered that or did not know that at all until today. So that's very cool. Uh, nobody does. Um, <laughs> nobody does. But uh, and, and as I said, most companies have, you know, one thing that you use for carbon dosing. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've studied car uh, carbon dosing extensively in the lab, and it does make a difference what you use at what phosphate levels. Mm -hmm. no, that's so great. I'm really that's glad cool. we got to that because I didn't know if we were going to get to that or not today. No, that's awesome. Uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on today, and I'm probably going to have to bribe you to come on again one day because you are a wealth of fountain of infinite knowledge and reefing. <laughs> well, not so much infinite, but uh, it's been a lot of years, and I learned yeah. some from some very, very knowledgeable, good people, and I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And, and Devin, this has been a blast. I'm, uh, I'm happy to do this again uh, whenever you like. Uh, please tell all of your uh, your viewers that um, they can contact me through the website, tropicmarin-usa.com. Uh, all the product information is on our European website, which is tropicmarin.com. And uh, I'm always available to help people uh, with their tanks. Awesome. That's that's awesome. It's awesome to see a company, you know, going back and actually helping people with the products, all the follow-up. Love to see it. Um, I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of questions in the comments. So maybe in a month or so, maybe we'll do another one to answer whatever questions come up after the fact. Because... Yeah, absolutely. People can also email me if they'd yeah, like. Perfect. Uh, office at tropicmarin-usa.com. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lou. Much appreciated. All right, Devin. Thanks okay, so much. Thanks. It was really great. Awesome. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.